Hello friends, greetings and welcome to my YouTube channel. First of all, I thank you for taking your valuable time and interest in this soil practical based demonstration video. In this video, I'll show you the standard procedures involved for the laboratory estimation of moisture content in soil samples. Soil moisture content for any soil samples is determined by the method called gravimetric method. Before we start, for your convenience and information, the content of this video revolves around the following. First, we will see what is the soil moisture content and the formula used for its calculation. Next, we will see the list of laboratory materials or equipment or instruments required. Then the demonstration of the stepwise procedure involved in the estimation of soil moisture content. And finally, the calculation of the soil moisture content using Microsoft Excel. So to begin with, the soil moisture content is the amount of water that the soil contains and is expressed in terms of percentage. Soil from agriculture, mining sites, forest, barren area, etc. show a remarkable difference in their soil moisture content. Soil moisture content of an area is attributed either by the presence or absence of the good vegetation cover, organic matter, soil texture, and rainfall receives, etc. And the formula used for calculation of soil moisture content is expressed in percentage as given on the screen, where soil moisture content percentage is equal to M2 minus M3 in the numerator divided by M3 minus M1 in the denominator in 200, where M1 stands for the weight of the petri dish, M2 stands for the weight of the petri dish plus the fresh soil samples, M3 stands for the weight of the petri dish plus the oven dried soil samples. After this, we will see the list of requirements necessary for the determination of moisture content in soil. And they are, first, you need a fresh soil samples, a clean petri dish, a spatula, an oven, and or a weighing balance. Next, the procedure. To start this practical, the first step is you need to collect the soil samples. The composite soil samples collected from the field or area of interest are brought to the laboratory and for soil moisture content estimation, fresh soil samples should be used. The soil samples should not be sieved, however, large stones or pebbles and root should be removed. For the sake of demonstration purposes for this video, let us use the soil samples collected from forest area and grassland area. Next, take the petri dish and mark them or number them in order to avoid confusion. Let us code the petri dish F1 F2 and F3 and from grassland area as G1, G2 and G3. The next step is measure and record the weight of the petri dish. In this step, first day, day first Take the numbered or the coded petri dish and measure its weight. After measuring its weight, record the weight of the petri dish. The 
then press the pair button in the weighing balance in order to obtain 0, 0.00 weight. Then add 10 gram of fresh soil samples into the petri dish. Point to remember, remember to record the exact amount of soil samples added. Similarly, this process is repeated for petri dish F2 and G1, G2, G3, and so on, whatever the number of samples that you have. For calculation purposes, let us assume that the data displayed on the screen. First, the weight of the petri dish, which is M1. Next, the weight of the petri dish and the weight of soil added into the petri dish. So when you add the weight of the petri dish and the weight of the soil added, then you'll get the M2 value, which is weight of the petri dish plus the weight of the fresh soil samples. So this is how you'll get the M2 values. These are the weighted soil sample. These soil samples are then placed in an oven at 105 degrees centigrade for 24 hours. After 24 hours, lower the temperature of the oven and take out the petri dish and let them cool down. Again, measure and record the weight of the petri dish and the oven dried soil samples. And for calculation purposes, let us assume that these data which are shown on the screen are the final reading of the petri dish after taking out from the oven. Then once this is done, the next stage is the determination of soil moisture content percentage using Microsoft Excel. Next, let's do the calculation of soil moisture content using Microsoft Excel. And the samples we studied are forest soil samples and grassland soil samples. And the weight of the petri dish or M1 value are these. And then similarly, to each of these petri dish, we add 10 grams of soil samples. And the exact amount of soil we added to each petri dish are this much. So now we have got the weight of the M1 value and the weight of soil. So to obtain the weight of the Petri dish plus weight of soil weight, you have to add these two values. So you have to put equal sign weight of the petri dish plus weight of the soil. So you'll get this much. Similarly, for grassland area, weight of the petri dish plus weight of the soil samples added. That will give you the M2 values, right? And at last, after 24 hours, we've taken out the petri dish from the oven and then we weighed it. So these values here are the weight of the petri dish and the oven dried soil or M3. So from here we can see from the formula soil moisture content is M2 minus M3. So let's do this to first the numerator M2. M2 is this value right minus M3 is this value with equal sign you'll get that much value and you can do the same is equal to M2 minus M3. Enter, you'll get this much. And the denominator is M3 minus M1. So we'll put here M3 minus M1 equal to M3 minus M1. M1 is weight of the petri dish. Similarly, you can just drag for the replicate two and three. And then M3 minus M1. And then similarly, you drag for replicate 2 and 3. So now the soil moisture content will be 
equal to numerator is m2 minus m3 divided by denominator m3 minus m1 m3 minus m1 into 100 you see and similarly for other replicates you can just track all right and similarly you can calculate for the grassland area so m2 minus m3 divided by m3 minus m1 into 100 that is the value for the moisture control from the grassland area for replicate one so similarly you can drag this so now once you get this value you can find the average value of the three replicates so to find the, the average value of the three replicates just click in this cell go to auto sum average and that will be your value here i'll mark it yellow okay so this will be your average mean moisture soil moisture content percentage for the samples from forest area and similarly click the cell here go to auto sum average and then enter and this value here will be your mean average soil moisture content for samples collected from the grassland area so this is how you obtain your mean value for different soil samples so we're just making sure that you have three replicates for each samples and that whatever the value obtained for the three replicates you will compute its average value and then the average value will represent the soil moisture content percentage of the soil samples study okay so with this we have come to the end of this video and i hope students right from the undergraduate postgraduate and even some researchers who are working in this related area and also especially to those students who want to recapitulate or to recall this practical in their study and for this video the reference that i use are these so with that we have come to an end of this video so thank you so much for listening and i hope you have learned through this video and if you find this video helpful kindly share like comment and do subscribe to my channel thank you once again for your love and support god blessed